your back and what do you expect for April and Feb 2021? Okay, so good morning everyone. My name is Alex and I'm from Sanofi University in Indonesia. Now basically in this day one, we have experts that may Dean of the College of Agriculture of uh, S. Rebashi, 
And uh, with her, uh, our Forced to recharge by as an SU IPSA advisor. And uh, this afternoon, we'll be talking about uh, SLSU Clonal Nursing Forester, Harold Green, the mighty. So, thank you for uh, coming over all the way from uh, SLSU. Is it in Lukban? No? Yeah, Lukban, yes. So. And uh, we're also very happy to have uh, delegates from uh, three universities from uh, Indonesia. No? We have uh, Gajah Mata University. Can I uh, can, uh, please uh, request to do some that? So, the very next one. Then, I think Bogor, Agriculture Institute. Um, and Hassan University. We have a big delegation. And uh, thank you for coming over. And I understand uh, somebody from India will also be coming. But uh, to follow the next few days. So. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge our uh, officers of. Uh, Organizing committee. Uh, Ms. Isabel de la Paz from the College of Forestry and Reporting, Internal Council of And then uh, Lawrence Reyes, Jim Lawrence Reyes, head of social media. And uh, Ms. Christa Escano, uh, Asia Pacific Regional Representative. How do I pronounce Pai Pai as as Ka Azadira, Asia Pacific Regional Representative. And of course, a lot of members of the organizing committee have been very, very busy. Uh, I can give them uh, a few weeks back, and also from uh, students from the SLSU. Understand uh, your uh, this your annual Asia Pacific Regional Meeting. And uh, we uh, hope you'll have a very fruitful stay here. And the College of Forestry welcomes you. I understand you have your tour already on the campus. Have you been to the lower campus? Well, it's a big campus. I think Gajah Mada and other universities also. No? We have a big campus. Uh, we hope you'll enjoy your stay here. You'll uh, learn uh, a lot uh, from your fellow students. And we encourage you know, uh, activities like this, which is one of the objectives of the pizza. And uh, actually, your learning will uh, depend on how uh, you interact with each other, learn from each other, and uh, rest assured that we, the administration, uh, support uh, supports uh, this kind of uh, activities. It's just unfortunate it's holiday today. That's why there are not many students. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, you'll have the opportunity to meet uh, the other students. Oh, we have a faculty here. Dr. Krasti uh, Pino. Yeah, Dr. Krasti. Thank you for coming uh, over. Thank you. The College of Forestry, uh, we have nine uh, units, but of the nine, we have four academic units, Forest Biological Sciences, uh, where Dr. Pino comes from, and with the uh, Social Forest and Forest Governance. And then you have the Forest Products and Paper Science. And then the other one is uh, Institute of uh, Renewable Natural Resources. So hopefully in the next few days, you'll also be interacting with uh, all, some of the students and hopefully some of the faculty. So you'll uh, have a better glimpse of the college. And our college is uh, home to the Mount Healing Forest Reserve. When is their schedule held? Are they going to uh, type? Uh, when, when is the schedule? Uh, are they going to spend the night there? 
Ah, good. Okay. And uh, and there, yeah, I learned you went to the Botanical Gardens, but uh, it's being refurbished. It's been closed for uh, quite some time because of COVID. But uh, we will be host to the ASEAN, a Southeast Asian National Botanical Gardens International Conference this June. So we'll have to refurbish it. Uh, aside from the places that you can uh, see here and experience uh, in the college, uh, we hope uh, the interaction, the interacting with the other students is really what we expect that you'll uh, be gaining a lot from, from, this, from your visit here. And I'm sure probably also from uh, the, other, our other partner university no? will also be uh, present and uh, be accessible no? whatever uh, if there are things that you want to know from our partner organization. And by the way, can I also request uh, SLU, FLSU students to pick up? Uh, and then from the CFNR, no? students, they're going to be thinking. Anyway, tomorrow, there'll be more students. So again, we warmly welcome you. And uh, please let us know how uh, we can uh, be of further assistance so that your time over here will be uh, very fruitful and productive. And uh, rest assured, no? our faculty members and students are all uh, very happy and excited to see you here. So thank you very much and uh, welcome to our group. Uh, thank you so much, Dean Marlo. So indeed, the local committee of the Philippines are so excited to have you here and we are hoping that you will have a chance to fully explore our college, gain new knowledge and experiences, and of course, interact with other students uh, from the Philippines. That may also be a bridge for a lifelong bond or friendship. So with that, we are also graced by a video message from the SLSU president. Um, Dr. Dorat, Dorat, and let's give them, give her a round of applause. Uh, good day, uh, everyone to the uh, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and Southern Luzon State University officials. To our foreign and uh, local participants, and to the organizing committee members, and students from UPLB and SLSU. I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here today. I would like to uh, mentioned that we are honored to welcome all of you, especially those who have come from afar to witness this event, as well as those who took the initiative for making this event possible. Without you, this event will not be successful. Today, uh, we celebrate the start of the Asia-Pacific Regional Meeting 2023 that is organized through the collaboration of the International Forest Association of Southern Luzon State University and the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Uh, the organization is inspired by the vision of global cooperation from all over the world, which encourages a wide spectrum of activities among its members to broaden their knowledge and understanding to achieve a more sustainable future for our forest communities. Facilitate the students uh, gaining of practical experiences that will lead to a wider global perspective as they collaborate with international partners and 
members of local community organizations. We hope that this event will provide opportunities as well as a bridge for us to promote interactions between diverse cultures and enable the participants to enjoy the beautiful landscapes of the University of the Philippines uh, at Los Baños, where I, great, uh, where I graduated from, and nearby areas in the Philippines while sharing knowledge about our forestry practices. Richard uh, Rogers once said, and I quote, the only way forward if we are going to improve the quality of the environment is to get everybody involved, end of quote. In line with 2023, International Day of Forests, this regional meeting will be focusing on the theme Forests and Health. We're in a mindful understanding of Philippine forest resources for the academe, industry, people, and environment. The holding of various activities such as campus tours, workshops, and presentations that will showcase findings from the municipalities of Lucman, Quezon, and Los Baños, Laguna will provide every attendee with knowledge and fun-filled experiences on the culture and rich practices that are being uh, done by different communities, particularly disciples of the field of forestry in the country. I hope that today's activities will be fun-filled, very educational, and interesting to all of you. Thank you very much. God bless us all. Thank you so much, Dr. Riyaki, for your message about strengthening the pillars of the forestry sector by focusing within the forestry education. So we truly appreciate you making time for us and even sending a video message just to warm you up on our delegates. So of course, we also have an inspirational message from one other than the Dean of the College of Agriculture of SSSU, Dr. Juanita San Jose. Let's give her a round of applause. Hello, good morning. It's nice to be back here in Las Palmas. Actually, I came from one to Humble Barangay in Las Palmas. It's in Barangay Baro. Barangay line beside the Laguna Bay. Okay, so I actually prepared an inspirational message, and it would be better if I read it for you to be uh, clearly inspired for this week's activity, okay? So again, good morning to all of you. It's my great joy to be part of this uh, Asia Pacific Regional Group 2023. And it is exciting and challenging to see young people like you that collaborate and network other forestry students and come together to promote the preservation and protection of our forests for a healthy environment. I am not here in front of you to discuss um, topics related to forests, but let me share what I have prepared for you this morning by this question. What is the status of our forest nowadays? Now, forest ecosystems are a critical component of the world's biodiversity, as many forests are more biodiverse than other ecosystems. So, hindi lang, it's not include trees only, but rather many of our factors. The area covered by forests is that one of the indicators of sustainable development goal. Number one. Number 15, life on land. Okay. So according to the FAO UN report on the state of world's forest 2020, <laughs> better position, Okay, 
So according to Hall, UN report on the state of world's forest 2020, deforestation and forest degradation continue to take place at alarming rate. Is that right? Which contributes significantly to the ongoing loss of biodiversity. Okay. So since 1990, it is estimated that 420 million hectares of the forest have been lost through conversion to other land uses. There are lots of industries, conversion to domestic uses um, for land conversion for uh, industries and the like. So between 2015 and 2020, the rate of deforestation was estimated at 10 million hectares per year, down from 16 million hectares per year in 1990s. The area of primary forest worldwide has decreased by over 80 million hectares since 1990. And the agricultural expansion continues to be the main driver of deforestation. We all know that uh, the problem in terms of food security is really increasing or is rising, that there is a continuous um, land conversion, mostly of our forests. Now, uh, there is still commercial agriculture, primarily the cattle, ranching, cultivation, and soybean and oil farm accounted for 40% of tropical deforestation between 2000 and 2010, and local subsistence agriculture for another 30%. So why we need to protect our forests? Here's eight reasons why the UN Food and Agriculture Organization says why we need to protect our forests. Okay. One, healthy forests means healthy people. Okay. Forests provide people with an array of resources, including fresh air, clean water, and nutritious food. Many also associate them with physical recreation and good mental health. As you tour with the campus, I believe there are refreshing moments. These trees brought to you. Now, what is perhaps less known is that forests are also a vital source of medicine. Up to a quarter of all medicinal drugs in the developed world are plant-based. And this rise to as much as 80% in developing countries. Next, forest food provides healthy diets. In the indigenous communities, you usually consume over 100 types of wild food, many of which are harvested in forests. Access to forest based food system has also been linked with increased dietary diversity, often leading to better health outcomes. Deforestation not only threatens food sources, it can also have serious consequences, such as flood, landslide, and the like, with nearly one in three remaining infectious diseases linked to land use change, the process. Another is restoring forests will improve our environment. So some 10 million hectares of forest above the size of Iceland, Iceland across the world were estimated to have been lost each year from year 2000 to 2020. A much larger area suffers land degradation each year. Now deforestation also emits a large amount of greenhouse gases, as well as threatening the many species that call forests their home. At least 8% of plants and 5% of animals in forests are extremely high risk of extinction. Sustainably managing the and restoring forests can address climate change and biodiversity loss while also producing services and goods required for a sustainable environment. Next, sustainable forestry can create millions of green jobs. Forests support over 86 million green jobs and the livelihood of millions of others. Just what we have discussed earlier with Dean Mendoza, really, the floating 
of many of the processing plant, wood processing plant, really affect much in terms of employment. Now, more than 90% of those who live in extreme poverty are forest dependent. Wood from sustainably managed forests can support a large range of industries, including paper production and construction. Investment in forest restoration can also help create more jobs, something which could prove particularly relevant post pandemic. Next, degraded lands can be restored at huge scale. The Great Green Wall Project seeks to create an 8,000 kilometer green belt across Africa's dry land and restore 100 million hectares of degraded land, while also creating 10 million jobs and improving food security. Now, once complete, it is expected to be the largest living structure on the planet three times larger than the Australia's Green Barrier River. Another, everything comes. Even small tree planting can make a difference. The benefit of planting urban forests in mega cities alone have been estimated at $500 million a year, thanks to their ability to clean air, provide food, and reduce energy usage. Last, empower people to sustainably use forests. Getting people involved at local level so communities can effectively manage and govern the land on which they depend is vital to creating a healthy environment. Community empowerment also offers an opportunity to rebuild forest landscape that are equitably and productive, helping avert some of the risks posed by deforestation. So with these reasons, what are the role of you, young generations? In the part of last year's 2020 26th session of the Committee on Forestry, with the team of Bright Future for Forestry, investing in youth career development, the message from the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, who don't you, highlighted the importance of continuous planting the seeds and seedlings for a better, more sustainable future, which we cannot do without the youth. And he considered youth as our next generation of leaders, business makers, and ordinary workers that bridge to a healthy future. He further added that the role of forestry is changing and increasingly recognized as a crucial part of the solution in addressing today's complex global changes ranging from climate to hunger and from poverty to socioeconomic inequalities. There is a growing demand for expertise in sustainable forest management, forest conservation and restoration, agroforestry, and in forest-based bioeconomies and the forest sector must be made appealing to young people. The Director General said, we must ensure young people have the skills to shape a continuously evolving forest sector by investing in their education and career development, just like this, by highlighting the expertise and contribution of young professionals, and by providing appealing opportunities for youth to try and emerge as leaders. So to end this talk, let me borrow what the Cloud Director General have mentioned, and I quote, investing in a sustainable future means investing in you. To all of the youth gathered here today, the challenge is yours. 
with the divine guidance and holy intervention from above, the future depends on you. Once again, good morning, and I thank you all. Have a blessed day. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for reaching us with your very inspirational message. If you would go to the art that you can see as you enter the College of Forest King after we sort it, uh, the forest it says there that the forest is a source of life. So, however, forest degradation and deforestation, as we all know, is still rapid and not just locally, but in, it is an international problem. So, which is why youth meetings and uh, conferences like APRM is more important than ever since we look at the future of the world. And the environment, especially since the step of climate change, is only getting worse. So the future depends on us, as I agree, and we are the future. So before we proceed, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the Associate Dean of Theater Arts, AE Admiral Kalila. No, what's the name? The Associate Dean of Theater Arts, AE Admiral Kalila. And then, uh, for our call, we have a lot of people. Sorry for the confusion. Thank you for And our uh, newly appointed director of the Training Center for Tropical Resources and Ecosystem Sustainability, or PEAS, Dr. Krusty Dino. So, thank you so much for making time to be with us despite uh, today being a holiday now. And now, to complete our welcome session, we go back to the initial, initial question. So, what is the purpose of all of this? Aside from having the chance to travel and try out the dishes food, what is our main purpose? So, kidding aside, we have Isabel de la to tell us more about Isabel in PRM. So, Isabel, Isabel is a senior student of BS4C at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, specializing in urban forestry. Since 2021, Isabel has been serving as an internal counselor of the International Forestry Students Association, or NESCA wherein she has the opportunity to become a speaker in the Urban Forest for Future Proof Series, session during the UNDCD and FAO Regional Forum 2022, and also the Forest Sales to Pay the Bill site session during the 15th World Cup Forestry Congress in Seoul, South Korea. During the 20th Commonwealth Forestry Conference, she also became a judge for the 3 year Talk Challenge. Aside from this class, Bell is the former vice president of the Association of Filipino Forestry Students, CPLP, and the former communication and outreach program team volunteer for the youth in landscape initiative. So, Ms. Isabel de la Paz, everyone, let's give her a round of applause. Well, everyone, to our distinguished guests, Dean and Barbara, Associate Dean Patilan, and College of the Virus of Rosa, and Dr. Krusty Pino of CSNRUPLB, President Zaleta Nantes, Dean San Jose, Forest Richard Valle of SLSU, CFNR and SLSU professors, to our EPRM Organizing Committee, online participants, and in person delegates. Mabuhay and welcome to the 2023 Asia Pacific Regional Meeting in the Philippines. So let's give our first round of applause. I'm Isabel Zerta Lapaz, the Internal Counselor of EPSA, and a member of the APRM 2023 Organizing Committee. On behalf of the EPSA Board and the Organizing Committee, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our beautiful country and university for this long awaited event. It's been a while since we had our last in-person APRM, but we are very grateful to see you all here despite the recent challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're all gathered here as ISA members, so we are somewhat familiar with what ISA is. But to give a brief background, ISTA is the largest international association of students that study forestry in other related fields. ISTA is based in Freiburg, Germany, and was established in 1990 by forestry students. And as an organization,
innovation that envisions a world that uh, appreciates forests, we continuously strive to enrich our members' education by providing opportunities to become part of international events, to network with fellow forestry students and professionals in such fields, and of course, to deepen our understanding of our members' cultures and foster intercultural change. To meet our vision, we aim to expand our network of students and young researchers around the world. But not only do we encourage students to become part of ISA, but we also transcend learning from the boundaries of our classroom. Through our tree learning platform, capacity building workshops, and webinar series. We aim to connect diverse cultures by creating activities such as the cultural days and inter-regional halls, where members get to immerse themselves in different cultures. Of course, these objectives will not be met without the local committees from different universities around the world, which we consider the pillars of this stuff. As of now, we have more than 130 local committees from 60 countries worldwide, and I hope that we get to see the data we have around like 500 local committees. So, next slide, please. Every year, local committees from their region, their respective regions, gather to learn about the host country and participate in the regional elections to elect their next regional representatives and regional meeting organizing committee, which will, for us, this year will take place in a few days. And as one of the extra regions, the Asia Pacific Regional Meeting gathers LP from around. Throughout the years, APRFM has taken place in countries that, such as South Korea, Taiwan, Japan, and Indonesia. In 2018, we had our first APRM here in the Philippines. This year, APRM is taking place in the Philippines again. It is being organized by the Association of Filipino Forestry Students, UPLB, College of Forestry and Natural Resources, UPLB, and Southern Luzon State University. APRM will tackle the theme. APRM will tackle the theme Forest and Health, where we will deepen our understanding of the forest resources of the Philippines through academic, industrial, environmental, and societal lenses. But aside from these sessions, we will also have workshops to learn about ITSA and excursions at the Makili Botanical Garden and Makili Ring. Forest Park to immerse ourselves in the beauty of mountain trees. With all that being said, it still wishes all the best and success for APRM 2023. And of course, we sincerely hope that you will enjoy the amazing seven day experience that we will have here in Los Angeles. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for that um, brief introduction about it to a GPRM as well. So, indeed, this has been a bridge for many of us to have uh, opportunities to exist, to expand our network, knowledge, and even learn outside the classroom and even outside our countries. So, the APRM has been an annual event that I'm sure many of us are excited to participate in as we share our knowledge and culture to our neighboring Asian countries. So that's basically the wrap of our welcoming session for day one. And now, before we continue our most awaited sessions for today, I am more than happy and excited to announce that we will have our lunch break. So we will allow a lot of one hour for our lunch break, and everyone is expected to be back at 1 p.m. at this point. So happy lunch, guys, and see you again at 1 p.m.